Come and just worship him. We give you praise, Jesus.
how can I breathe without your touch? And how can I live without your love? How I love all you. Sing Jesus. that tonight we have this another opportunity to fellowship in the light of your word. It is the entrance of your word that giveth light. So your word comes with clarity as I speak tonight. And I decree that our hearts receive understanding. Our hearts are good soil. So the word will germinate and bring forth fruits. We give you praise. Your people are equipped. Jesus is glorified. And we thank you for the blessing upon this service. In Jesus precious name. And every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. It's 30 days of glory 2022. Amen. Glory. Amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. And all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online, we love you. We're glad to have all of you in the service. We also want to welcome the Aquaibom State community connected by way of radio. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, help me invite a friend, a family, and somebody you love. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our campus is around the world. We're glad to welcome all of you to the service, guys. Get ready. It's going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. Are we excited to be in the house tonight? Can we celebrate our fellowship with a shout? Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight. Grab your phones, help us share the message, help us tag some people, drop it in different groups around the world, and also help us subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube. Help us like the video on Facebook. All of that is critical in getting us the kind of visibility we require from the teaching I mean, for the people of God to get inspired, built up, and equipped. Praise God. All right, we're still examining the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, 
who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Next verse. For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen unto the glory of God by us. Next verse. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Now observe the next verse, 22. <clears throat> verse 22. Who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. The deposit of the spirit in our hearts. The word sealed us, like I said yesterday, is like a stamp of approval. So we already have the stamp of the spirit. Jesus is the fulfillment of all the promises of God. In other words, God's commitment to man was revealed, fulfilled, established, and settled in Christ Jesus. All of God's commitment to man was revealed, fulfilled, established, and settled in Jesus Christ. Look at Romans chapter 15 verse number 8. Romans chapter 15 verse number 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Next verse. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written. For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles. And sing unto thy name. So Jesus is the minister of the truth of God. Who establishes the promises made unto the fathers. Then we began to deal with the fact that God gave promises in the Old Testament. And one of the most profound, profound promises was Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Next verse. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. I will cause you to walk in my statutes. So we've been examining the fruit of the spirit or what we call the fruit of the son of God. What we call the fruit of the son of God. And we began to look at, you know, the nature of God. That when you got born again, God didn't add something to you. God gave you a new identity. A brand new identity. Alright? The book of 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word seed, if your Bible was mine, I will underline that word seed, is the word sperma, S-P-E-R-M-A. Not of corruptible heredity, but incorruptible heredity. In other words, the heredity we have cannot change. It's incorruptible. If you like, steal. If you like, tell lies. It's not good to steal. Is contrary to who you are. It's not good to tell lies. It's contrary to who you are. But the truth is, your nature is the nature of truth. And that cannot change. Your activities cannot change your nature. Your activities cannot change your nature. You see that? What you do don't define who you are. It's your birth that defines who you are. Your birth. So what happens when we sin is we are living abnormal lives. When we sin, we are living abnormal lives. Our normal life is life in the spirit. Because we are born of the incorruptible seed. That is Nothing can affect who we are. Nothing can affect the seed that we have. You can't destroy heredity. It's the same. So we have the same heredity. You know, sometimes when we are talking about other Christians, you say, ah, I love Pastor this. I covet his grace. He is such a humble man. 
He should be an example of how you should be. But you're not supposed to want what he has. Whatever that pastor has, whatever that bishop has, whatever that prophet has, is what you exactly have. No bishop has what you don't have. No pastor has what you don't have. Because our parentage is one. God gave birth to us with everything that we need. And each individual has the same. The same heredity. So you, you have what other believers have. The only difference is that that person you admire is cultivating himself more than you are. You are born of God. Your nature is God's nature. In other words, the, the word born of God means procreation. It has to do with being conceived and being brought forth. So we were, we were, we were born by God. And we receive the life of God as a result of his death, burial, and resurrection. And we were brought forth out of his resurrection as brand new men without a record of the past. If you observe, Brother Paul doesn't use the word born as the others do. Paul uses the word new man, new creation. Paul deals directly with the pressing of the resurrection. He puts it like this in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them good works. The word workmanship at a point they couldn't comprehend with it. Because uh, they couldn't comprehend what it meant. Alright. That word workmanship. Which means, what it means is what someone does specially that is unique to that person. The word workmanship. What someone does personally that is unique to that person. Something that only you did. So you are the workmanship of God. And you know, in very ancient Greek, it means you are God's only and unique handwork. You are God's only and unique handwork. Something that only God could do. Again, it refers to the father. How many of you know that nobody can have two fathers? You only have one father. So when he says you are the workmanship, that means this is singularly God's work. This is what God has done. Ephesians 2.10, you are created in Christ. Ephesians 4.24, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So the new man is like God. There are two things. Number one, the new man is in Christ. Number two, the new man is like God. The new man is in Christ. And the new man is like God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, he uses a word they are likely to take note of, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He uses the word led by the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit means to be born or to be carried by the Spirit. To be born or to be carried. Just like you say the aircraft is airborne. That means the air is carrying the plane. So when you are led, it means you are born. The word ago. In Romans 8.15, he now explains further. Romans 8.15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Say with me very loud, I have received the spirit of adoption. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Adoption is the word utisia in the Greek. It means we are in the same position just like Jesus. Adoption. It's not the kind of adoption you do in Nigeria where you go and pick a baby from the orphanage. You know, we were never in any orphanage. Adoption is a Bible language which means we are, we are in the same position as Jesus. In other words, the same spirit in Christ is the same spirit in the man in Christ. The same spirit in Christ is the same spirit in the man in Christ. 
So in Galatians 3.23, Paul teaches salvation by saying, Galatians chapter 3, verse 2, sorry, verse 2 and 3. This only will I learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Next verse. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So he calls salvation receiving the spirit. When we say you are saved, we mean you have received the spirit of God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. Galatians 3 26. For you are all the children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus. Children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus. You are the children of God. By faith. In Christ Jesus. So we receive the spirit of God. Which means we are children of God. In other words. We have God's life. We have God's life. The life of a Christian. Is the, is the God life. The life of a Christian is the God life. Look at Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 to 6. Galatians 4, 4 to 6. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Next verse. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Next verse. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Crying, Abba, Father. How many of you will find it difficult to believe if Jesus said, I am just like my father? Anybody? I'm just like God. But he said, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Crying, Abba, Father. So he establishes the same father-son relationship God has with Jesus. You have the same father-son relationship with God that God has with Jesus. So by the spirit given to us, we have a relationship with God where God is our father. He is our parent and we are his sons and daughters. Glory to God. Say with me very loud. The spirit of God is the DNA of God. Say it again. The spirit of God is the DNA of God. And the spirit of God is in me. I have the same DNA with God Almighty. You see, at new birth, God multiplies his seed. He is the same God, but he procreates many sons. He multiplies his seed. And his seed is multiplied in the earth. That's why all of us are here this evening. Hallelujah. How many of you have a problem if somebody say, I have four children? Is there anybody? Is there anybody that has a problem if somebody say, I have 12 children? One man procreating 12. There are even fathers in the olden days that used to have 29 children. True or false? I don't know if it happens anymore. The economy has become very critical. Parents used to have 35 children. Procreation. So God has mass produced too. And all of us are his offspring. God multiplies his seed by the gospel. In other words, we can have many people born again in the face of the earth. Now, I wanted to hear this one. So, let me wait for you to write what you're writing. This one, I wanted to hear it very loud. Nobody is uniquely or distinctly a son of God than the other person. Nobody is uniquely or distinctly a son of God than the other person. In other words, as God's own children, we have his nature. 
None of us is more a son of God than the other. None of us is more solid than the other person. You know, there was a teaching like that where they say we, where they say we have children and we have sons. I don't know if you remember that teaching. We have children and we have sons. For unto us a son is born. Sons are born. One kind of very twisted theology. When my girls are 50, 60, and I know I will still be here. When Jemima will be 60, Jessime will be 50 something. You know, I'll still be around. Oh, sure. You know, Jael will be about 50 something to 40 something. I'll still be here. They will still be my children. At 60, Jemima is still my child. Even at 80, she's still my child. That's why when people die, they will say he is survived by 40 children. First child, 60 years. Because to your father, you're always a child. I'm teaching good. You're always a child. Now, I can never say to my children, you're no longer my child. You are now my adults. Because as long as you're born of someone, you are a child. The word child is the Greek word technon. T-E-C-H-N-O-N. Technon in the Greek, which means seed. Technon, seed. That's the word child. The other one is the word hoyos in the Greek. Hoyos, it means an heir. One who sits in your authority and in your position. Hoyos. There's technon, child, hoyos, an heir. Then there's another one, nepios. N-E-P-I-O-U-S, nepios, which has to do with growth. Ephesians 4.14, that you, henceforth be no more children, toes to and fro. That's the word nepios. 1 Corinthians 3, 2 to 3. I couldn't speak to, unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes, nepios. Nepios has to do with development. It has nothing to do with the way you are. It's just your conduct and your behavior. But everyone's sons and children are the same. Sons and children are the same. But a son can be a nepios. A son can be a babe in development. So all of us have the same nature. Because we have the same parent. But this is where we differ. Ephesians 5.1 Be therefore followers of God as their children. The word followers is the word mimitos. Mimitos in the Greek it means to act out. Not follower like follow follow. Okay? Not follower like follow follow. Imitators. The word mimitos means to have the capacity to be like someone. To be the mimitos of a person. You must have the same characteristics. So we are supposed to be imitators of God. Why is it possible? Because we have his heredity. We can imitate God because we have his characteristics. We can act like God because we have his DNA. So we are supposed to be imitators of God. Say with me everybody, I can imitate God because I am born of God. Say, let the, let, let the radio audience hear you very loud. I can, I, I can imitate God because I am born of God. Imitate. It's not like mocking. 
So we are not mimicking God. We are his imitators. We are born of God. We are not play acting God. We are actually acting him because we are born of him. So don't say something like to err is human, to forgive is divine. That's why Paul will say walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.16 Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Let's examine the word walk in the spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Every time the word walk is used, it primarily deals with mind consciousness. It deals with mind consciousness. So the word walk does not start with actions. It first of all starts with the kind of consciousness that you have. The word walk does not start with actions. It starts with the consciousness that you have. Walk in the spirit begins with your consciousness. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. Glory. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of what? Their mind, so their walk is in their mind. Their walk is in the vanity of their mind. Next verse. Having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Their walk is in their mind. So the very first place where there is a walk in the spirit is in your thinking. Walk in the spirit begins with your thinking. How do you think? What are you thinking? What's your mindset? That's where your walk in the spirit begins. Because eventually, it's your thinking that affects your conduct. Your thinking affects your conduct. Your behavior or your conduct is as a result of what you are thinking. So the word walk deals primarily with your consciousness. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Therefore we are always confident knowing this, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's dealing with consciousness. Referring to a mindset. Walk in the spirit. Begins with how you think. Look at the guys in 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal? And walk as men. Envy, jealousy among you is an indicator that you are carnal and you are walking as mere men. He was talking about the way they were thinking. Many times he writes to the Christians, he will say, Know ye not that your body is... So they were walking... Like that because of the way they were thinking. So walk in the spirit starts with the way you think. And that's why you've got to mind what you're thinking. How you think is how you're walking. Your walk is defined by your thinking. So walking in the spirit begins with your thinking. What dominates your thinking? What dominates your thoughts? What dominates your thoughts? The foundation of walking in the spirit is that God is at work in us. But to will and to do of his good pleasure. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 to 13.
God will not be at work. God was not at work. God is working. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God that worketh in us. 2 Corinthians 6.16 6, And what agreement are the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Walk in them doesn't mean God will step into your life with his legs and be walking inside you. Eh? Walk in them means God's thoughts will become your thoughts. I will walk in them. God's thoughts will become my thoughts. When I start thinking God's thought, it is God walking in me. Just like the prophecy of Ezekiel, I will cause you to walk in my statutes. In other words, God will inspire you. God will make you willing. Just like I told you last year, the word spirit means enablement. You are enabled already. The work starts with who you are. The work does not start with actions. It starts with your identity. There are actions in you. When you start thinking the thoughts of God, the thoughts of God will provoke those actions to find expression. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Are you still here? Yeah, 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves so that you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. Wow. Jesus Christ is where? So that should be your consciousness. So our corresponding consciousness towards what God is doing is what produces, as it were, the walk in the spirit. Our consciousness towards what God is doing is what produces, as it were, the walk in the spirit. I must first of all be conscious of what God is doing in me. The walk in the spirit is not a self-consciousness. It's a Christ consciousness. Stop being self-conscious. Be Christ conscious. Think like Christ. Think the thoughts of Christ. And then it will now provoke the conduct of Christ to find expression. I must see Christ in me. Christian living is not living for Christ. Of course, we live for Christ in that sense. But Christian living is Christ living through us. Christian living is Christ himself living through us. Glory to God. What's the mystery of the new covenant? Colossians 1.27 To whom God will make known the, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ where? In you. So God is at work in us. Christ is at work in us. The spirit is at work in us. Which means that the work starts with the thinking. What is on your mind? What do you think about the most? What, is, what are your dominant thoughts? In 1 Timothy 4.50, look at the admonition that Paul gave to Timothy. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. When you meditate on the things of God, your profiting will appear to all. So your dominant thoughts will affect your lifestyle. Your dominant thoughts will affect your lifestyle. What are your dominant thoughts? If you focus on Christ in you, you will see Christ walk through you. Your dominant thoughts refers to the walk. 
Look at James 1.22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Look at the pretext of that. Verse 17 and 18. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Next verse. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. A kind of first fruits. Then look at verse 19. Based on this, wherefore, because you are born of God, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. He's saying, based on this, your actions do not make you the son of God. Rather, being a son of God influences your actions. Being a son of God influences your actions. Influences what? Then verse 20 of that James chapter 1, look at what it says. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Because you are a son of God, be swift to hear but slow to speak. I think the social media generation needs to hear that more. They need to hear that more. I've never seen a generation of people that are as insultive, disrespectful as the social media generation. They just vomit their lack of training at home. They bring the indiscipline of their home to, to public space. They just insult you. They just insult you. Once you don't agree with them on something, they just abuse you. No respect, no decorum, no character. And I want to warn every one of you that is under my teaching, don't go that way because you don't belong to that generation. Don't be insultive. I have a right to vote for Tinibu. It's my right. I have a right to vote for Atiku if I want. I don't have to vote for Obi just because you want Obi. And you don't insult me for exercising my right. Go and do your own on your page. Go and do your own on your page. But they just rain insults, insults all over the place. Bible says, woe to a generation that do not have elders. Woe to a generation of people that do not have elders. What he's simply saying is, woe to a generation that don't have respect. You must have decorum. If you grew in a house where you were well raised, there are things you cannot spew out. I remember when I was younger, my father beats me and I want to cry, you tell me, shh. He's beating me. The thing is entering. I'm, I want to cry. <laughs> shh. <laughs> After a while, you say, am I hearing your voice? <gasps> mm -mm. How many of you remember? But today we live in a generation where people are just reckless. They just talk anyhow. Insult, abuse, attack. They don't even know what you are saying. They just appear on your page and say heresy. Uh -uh. It shows they are uncouth. They are not cultured. They are not trained. More and more as you see people behave on social media, you know that the future has a problem. The future has a problem. Because there are a generation of people that are not cultured. They are not well raised. But you are not of that generation. Say with me very loud, I am born of God. I think the thoughts of God. 
and it produces my actions in line with God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So the new creation is never dominated by sin. Verse 20, 21 of that James chapter 1. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Thanks verse. Wherefore lay apart. Somebody say lay apart. All filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Receive with meekness. Lay aside all filthiness. Listen carefully. Filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, all of those are characteristics of thinking. They are characteristics of thinking. So when he says lay them aside, what he's saying, don't think those thoughts. Don't entertain those thoughts. You cannot act what you have not thought about. It is what you have thought about that you act out. Oh yes. Remember you are born of God. So if you are going to walk in the spirit, your dominant thought has to be the things in the spirit. You cannot keep feeding yourself that you have bad habits. You are struggling with this habit. You keep saying it until it dominates your thoughts. Then you are buying books on how to break habits. I have a bad habit. I know my habit is bad. I have a ha bad habit. As you are saying it, you are thinking about it until it dominates your thoughts. And once it dominates your thoughts, you can't be free from that bad habit. Because your ha bad habit is a function of what you are thinking. To be free from a bad habit, begin to say, I have habits in Christ that are pure. Say it long enough until it dominates your thinking. Say it long enough until it becomes your reality. You produce a character that is not you because of your thinking. You produce a character that betrays you because of your thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. So your dominant thought should be who you are in Christ. You will never cure mental habits by doing exercises. Or trying to abstain from this or that. The very first thing you need to do to cure mental habits. Is to develop a consciousness of Christ. Develop a consciousness of Christ. So he says this man forgets. Straightway. He forgetteth what manner of man he was. Straightway he forgets. He's not conscious of it. So he's acting contrary to who he is. Walk in the spirit. It's in the spirit. What does the spirit mean to us? Walk in the spirit. It means the promised spirit. Walk in the promised spirit. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Galatians 3, 2, we have received the spirit. Galatians 3, 26, we are the children of God by faith in Christ. Galatians 4, 6. God has set forth the spirit of his son. So when he says walk in the spirit, it simply means walk as sons. Walk as a son of God. In other words, your thinking must align with the fact that you are a son of God. You walk as a son of God. When you have a dominant thought, no matter where you are found, 
you act same way. That's why the late Archbishop in the house of blessed memory said, and a lizard in Nigeria can never be an alligator in America. A lizard in Nigeria can never be an alligator in America. If your thoughts are full of ungodly stuff, even if you go to Australia, that will be your thoughts and that will produce your actions. Teaching good? You will always go in the direction of your predominant thoughts. Always. You will always go in the direction of your predominant thoughts. Don't try to be like someone. You're already a new creation in Christ. You're a son of God. How can a son of God try to be like a son of the devil? It makes no sense. Any son of God trying to be like a son of the devil has an identity problem. You need to think more in the world. Hallelujah. Bible culture is to treat people with respect. Treat an elder with honor. Our culture in Christ is to honor people. Don't allow the world squeeze you into their mold. Think within the confines of the world. You see a Christian wife at home acting very wild. Stop that. You are a Christian woman. You see a Christian man acting like the devil's junior brother. Stop that. You are a man of God. There is a mirror we have that we look at to see who we are. It's the word of God. Praise God. I, I, I said praise the Lord. Don't focus on the law. Focus on Christ. Focusing on the law will produce sinful habits. Focusing on who you are in Christ will produce Christ's habits. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Galatians 3.13 says, You have been crucified with Christ, and Christ lives in you. So Jesus' victory over sin is your possession. Jesus' victory over sin is your possession. It's not the crucified Christ that lives in you. It's the resurrected Christ that lives in you. So right now, the victory over sin, the victory over death, the victory over Satan, we're all in a person. Victory over sin, victory over death, victory over Satan. They are all in one person and that person is in you. You have never needed victory over sin. You have never needed victory over sin. You have never needed victory over a sinful habit. habit because you already have it. You already have victory. It's just time to focus on it. If you can focus on what you have in Christ, you will live a triumphant life. God didn't change your conduct. He changed your nature. Because your nature will produce your conduct. Am I blessing you tonight? Your nature will produce your conduct. Galatians says, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. The flesh is the old man sold under sin and under the law. Now you are a new creature in Christ. The day you accepted the altar call or the day you accepted Christ, 
Everything you will ever need came on your inside. Every resource you need to change your conduct came on your inside. If you give someone your spirit, you have given the person everything you have. If you give someone your spirit, you have given the person everything you have. God, by giving us his spirit, has given us everything. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am empowered to glorify God. Say it very loud. Say with me, I am empowered to honor God. I am empowered to live like God. Stop saying, Lord, I want to be more like you. That's unbelief. You are like him. I want to talk like you. You are already like him. You are a son of God now. Now are we the sons of God. The spirit of God, whatever is in the spirit of God, whatever is in the life of God, that's what you have. Whatever is in the spirit of God, Whatever is in the life of God, that's what you have. You don't have an anger problem. You don't have a stealing problem. You don't have a lying problem. Hallelujah. You are in Christ. I say you are in Christ. Your dominant thought will affect your conduct. Your dominant thoughts will affect your conduct. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. Does that sound like the fruit of the spirit? Yeah. Think on these things. That's how to walk in the spirit. Think the thoughts of God. Stay with the thoughts of God 247 and you find yourself walking in the spirit. Say what God says about you. Say what God says about you. Glory. Glory. Say, I say what God says about me. God says, I am righteous. I am righteous. God says, I have won. I am in victory. God says, I am accepted. I am accepted. God says, he will walk through me. So I walk in the spirit. I do not fulfill the desires of the flesh. I didn't get a powerful amen. Get me a microphone. Today I was just going through social media and I came by a write-up by Bishop Isaac. Bishop, come. I want you to, to say those, that thing you said in your write-up today. Get us audio on that score, mic. Amen. You were writing about substitution. I mean restitution. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you wrote some things. Yes, sir. On restitution. Yes. Uh, it, it was one pastor that was challenging you and Fred uh, Adola that uh, if you are serious, you should make restitution of all the tithe you have collected all these years that uh, you have been collecting tithe. And I copy your message of yesterday. I say those frivolous, fraudulent, and uh, charlatan pastors should get their reply here. And I, I knew some of them that they are not actually doing what they were asking us to do. I know them. Uh, I, I, I said a lot of things, sir. Yeah, you spoke from a position of knowledge. Yes, sir. Because uh, I knew them. Yes, I say if you want to do restitution, yes, 
uh, go and make recitation of those your wives that have been crying and silent, crying because of your brutality and your cruelty. Make restitution That's in those right. areas. Restitution has to be Total. not just financial or material. It has to be psychological. That's right. And I know of some of them that have prudently uh, collected money, borrowed money from people. I say, if you want to make restitution, those money, millions of naira you borrowed and collected from your loved ones, people that trust you, Go and return those money to them. That's right. And that is restitution. That's if right. you want to do restitution, what of the people you broke their heart? That's right. You broke their heart, they are crying in your name every day. That's right. Go and make restitution. Then you come and talk to the global purpose. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is phase one, sir. I still have phase two, sir. You have phase two? Yes, sir. Uh -uh. Can you share with us phase two? Yes. I, 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 the phase two is that uh, they are saying what Jesus has not said. That's right. One, it started with the case of Zacchaeus. Jesus has never told Zacchaeus to make restitution. No. And what of the adulterous woman? Yes. Jesus never asked the woman to go and bring all the money she accumulated as a result of Hello, tree. He never did. I remember the woman of, with the alabaster. She brought oil. the money from prostitution. Yes. She bought oil. And bought perfume. A perfume and used it on Jesus. And used it on Jesus. And Jesus knew that this woman is an harlot. And yet he received the perfume. He received the perfume. Yes. He received the perfume. And some were quarreling. And, uh, even the horse said, ah, this man, I don't think he's a prophet. Mm. He never knew how this woman got this money. Yes. So, Jesus never asked the woman to go and do restitution. No, no, no. He never. He just enjoyed the perfume. He, he enjoyed it. And the whole place was blessed. Not only that, I still remember, I, I, I remember the, 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 the elder brother of the prodigal son. That's right. You know, that man returned home. Yes. And people like those kind of pastors yes. expected the father of that man to demand for to demand restitution from that prodigal son. Yes, the money he wasted. Yes, the return. But the father gave him clothes. He gave him clothes. Gave him shoes. And the elder brother was there angry. Yes. you must do restitution. Yes, you must bring back all the belongings you collected from our father. Very true. Your own share must be returned. He was there angry. That's right. The same people are angry with you, Papa. Yes. <laughs> As you go, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Glory! That's the Bishop of Total Gospel. <laughs> I read it today. I was so blessed. I said, when I catch Bishop in church, I will give him a microphone. When people do not walk in the spirit, they live hypocritical lives. Hypocritical lives. You're asking for restitution, restitution. What about the person you insulted and walked away? Go back and make restitution. Restitution is not a New Testament principle because it is not realistic. The principle of restitution is not realistic because there are many things you do that you can never pay back. Amen. Say, I walk in the spirit. Say, I walk in the word. Say, I think the word. Say, my mind is filled with the word of God. My thoughts are dominated with the word of God. So I walk in the spirit. I do not gratify the deeds of the flesh. I didn't get powerful. Amen. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you tonight. Glory. Matu brina gengle de boza kayadas. Oh, zebira na mambre na gonglo de brona kotolo de bobra da bere kita na kalina mamayana hata. Walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the deeds of the flesh. I'd like you to grab somebody. Let's pray together for one another. 
that our minds will be filled with God's word. Our consciousness will be God's consciousness. Let's pray for one another. May go so brine gangle de bobo roko to bire de ba handangle de bo sakadia. We walk in the spirit. We walk in the consciousness of the world. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. I walk in the spirit. I walk in the light of God's word. My mind is filled with the thoughts of God. Pray together. Let's pray together for one another. Bronda dolo do baba brida baba rakatuna kalana mama. My mind is filled with the thoughts of God. I am filled with the fullness of God. I walk in the spirit. I do not gratify the deeds of the flesh. Zozo biana ngo agalide ba bredem bra na gagara na kakolo do bobobo rokotu na kalana mama mamere mama mele mama mele mama mele oh si bara katu na kalana mama mbresh oh si bara kato Let's pray. Let's pray for one another. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man make a tremendous power available that is dynamic in his workings. Everything that is of God in you, stir it up. Stir up all of the conduct. Stir up all of the deposits. Stir up all of the fruit. Stir up all of the gifts of God in your neighbor. Zimbandes Whoa, le baraka, le baraka, le baraka, le baraka, le baraka, le baraka. Ia nambo le bolobo sika la na babra gadam baraka toneke li na babara kade. Ege bo jeke le de babra gada baraka toneke li na mama. been changed healed free delivered I believe I believe and save all Lift up your hands and begin to praise him and bless him Oh, Zekila na baba maradabas Deliver
tonight. Thank you that revelation knowledge is growing big in this house. Veils fall off. Clarity comes. And every day your word comes we are built up and edified and Jesus is glorified. So I decree that these realities resonate. These realities fill our thoughts and our hearts. We walk in the spirit. We do not gratify the deeds of the flesh. And we thank you for the blessing that comes through the teaching of your word. Our lives are getting better by the day. We give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of fidelity. Amen. Glory. Amen. Grab your honor offerings. Let's give and worship and honor Christ. TV audience, banking details are scrolling. Social media, banking details are scrolling. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will bring the bank accounts for you. And we're just going to give and rejoice and celebrate what Christ has done for us in this house. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. We're giving faith tonight. Everyone giving online, on TV, in our campuses, all over the place, on radio and in the house here. We thank you that our offerings are a sweet smell. Every need is met in this place. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Anywhere on the pulpit, you drop your offerings and you don't want to go away all the platforms because of Ask the Counselor, which comes after now. Hit the music. Let's do it as we celebrate and honor and give our offerings tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the high. I have seen the Lord's goodness. 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 In the Lord's goodness, Lord's goodness His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. You are good, and your mercy is forever.
Glory. You know, many people who watch uh, TV or listen to the radio, they don't know so much magic goes on behind there. But sometimes we just get to see it and we get to appreciate it. Glory. Many thanks. Please be seated. Let's just get, ask the counselor of the ground. Account name is Power City International. UBA is bank number one on this edition of the program, 139-26465. 139-26465. That's the account number for UBA. The account name remains Power City International. It's the same account name for Zenith. 10-12-36-59-12. 10-12-36-59-12. That's the account number for Zenith Bank. Okay. Um, we've got so much time <clears throat> on this edition of the program. So we're going to be doing um, calls in two tranches. You know, we'll do the first tranche of 10 minutes, another tranche, 10 minutes, and then we're done. So for you to call in, if you're doing that from outside Nigeria, it's close to 34. Otherwise, simply 0806-800-9939. You want to send an SMS or two. Plus two three four if you are texting from outside of Nigeria. Otherwise, it's 703 691 Or use just send an email or two to ask the counselor now at gmail.com. For sponsorship, for partnership, for support, just with a view to keeping the program on air, all you just need to do is avail yourself of the hotline of the program. Plus two three four again if you are doing from outside of Nigeria, <coughs> excuse me, or 803 275 or Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. DR there for doctor. Okay. So I'm just reminded um, by the message that Global Baba gave me yesterday, and I hope that my producer does something about it. YouTubers, I'll be coming to you. I hope my producer does it. So I've just um, diverted attention now to my producer. So if you don't hear YouTube, all the people on YouTube, if you don't hear your name, you know who to hold responsible. Uh, once those names get to me, I will put them on air. That's my own. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Quera. That's his name. Again, the name of my producer is Pastor I.J. Quera. You know, complete with the production team. Um, our father is in the building. Global Baba, Dr. Abel. Damina! The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. No, Baba. I heard you ran out of radio station. <laughs> no, Baba. That you, you were alive. <laughs> no, Baba. I am interviewing somebody. I'm looking at the time. You know, I know that my father would take some time. So I'm just looking at the time. And then suddenly I see Obama Basikwere across the mirror in the studio saying, No, Baba's finished. No, Baba's finished. So, <laughs> so what did you do? <laughs> no, but you guess. That's why I'm here. In five you minutes. just stop the thing and just. <laughs> <laughs> no, Baba, it's good to be oh, here. Man, thank I, you. I, I love, love it. You, I love the know. fact that I'm here. Yeah. And um, yeah. Baba, I would love it more if yeah. we did a ritualistic opening prayers for the road. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for grace. We thank you for answers guaranteed in you. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for Kwai Bom State. Thank you for the rest of the world. And we decree and declare that the world is growing. Men are coming to the knowledge of the truth. The word of the Lord has free course in all nations of the earth as it is with us. And we declare that even as our governments transition, especially both at the national and state, there will be peace in Nigeria. And at the end of the day, the glory will be yours. Thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Baba. The Intercontinental. We're going to be starting this freestyle edition. By the way, it's day five. Is it day four or day five? Global Baba. Day five. Yep. Day five. Yeah, I didn't quite make mathematics at college. 2 plus 2, 22 for me, 1 plus 1, 11, but when it gets to counting days, at least I can try. So I think it's day 5 of um, the 30 days of glory, 2022, 20, and ask the council of starts now. From Louisville, Kentucky, United States of America, kingdom greetings to you, Global Barban, the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. My name is Collins. I write from Louisville in Kentucky, United States of America. I have a question, Global Barba, from James 4, 6, but he give it more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. My question, Global Baba, is what does the more grace mean? What does it also mean, God resists the proud? Thank you. Well, it's dealing with ministry there. It's dealing with ministry service. You know, uh, when you are humble, you are able to give expression to the grace of God that is on your inside. Global Baba. Then the continent. You know, the ease with which you do this thing, Global Baba. So, 
This man quotes uh, a verse. You are not even looking at it. You haven't asked us for them to open for us to see. And you just say, oh, it's giving. Because I know the verse. I know the chapter. No, but is there anyone that you don't know? Well, some. Global Baba. Then a continental. Okay, from the United States, let's head straight to Africa, South Africa. Here we come. Greetings to my father, Dr. Abel Damina, and the intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. My name is Sunovuyo Johnny. I'm writing from South Africa. My question is from a verse that has been troubling me. A verse where James says he gives more grace. I think he then quotes and uh, says it for some. Okay, and then says it for, I don't know, said that God receives the proud but gives grace to the humble. Does this mean grace is for some? Okay, that's it. In my curious mind, I thought proud people have no capacity maybe to receive due to their pride, but that school of thought didn't help me. Please rescue me, Global Bible. I'm quoting James 4.6. Well, pride stops you from giving expression to the deposit of God's grace. So that's why when you're humble, that grace finds expression because the grace of God for ministry plus humility combined together is gift and fruit to serve other people. And it, it will take humility for those to find expression. That's what he's talking about. Okay, no, Baba, let's just break away. Yeah, thank you. Global Bar, something I've been meaning to ask you two years, and I think this is the perfect time to ask you. How does it do you, Global Bar, Bar in your body? Um, when you are ministering, when you are teaching, you use a different key in your voice. When you are answering questions, Global Bar, Bar you use a different key. Is it the same person? Yes. <laughs> it's the same person. Different functions. No, but why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> the intercontinental, you kept to look for my trouble. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Global Baba, hey. let's go to this one. Anonymous entry. Please, Global Baba, you said Romans 8, uh, verse 8, the context was about flesh equals to the nature of a man without Christ. Please, I want to know the context of flesh and body. In First uh, Chronicles 6, 16, Romans 8.8 8 and Ephesians 5.31. Thank you. Please, I'm waiting for you. Please go back. You that send the mail, go and read the whole chapters. And when you read the chapters, look for what the chapter is explaining as flesh. Then you will understand. There's, there's no general explanation for flesh in the Bible. It is context that explains what he meant by flesh. So go and read the chapters again. I give you back your homework. Go read the chapters and carefully pay attention to how he describes flesh in each of those chapters. Okay, uh, producer, we'd like to say that our first tranche of um, 10 minutes for the first set of calls will start now. And we're just waiting for that, and then we break after that and do something else. Hello, Global Baba. I have a question. I'm not sure if this is the correct platform to ask, as I recently started to follow your teachings on Facebook. As uh, early as two months ago, glory be to God, I wanted to ask you, Baba, if there is any such thing called the gospel of repentance. If so, are we commissioned to preach repentance? Because I see there is a scripture where Jesus preaches repentance, Mark 1.15. Is it something that we, the new creation, should preach? Because Paul had an encounter at Damascus with Jesus, which caused him to repent. But I don't see him in his letters dwelling on repentance. But it speaks much more about the grace and goodness of our Father and also identity in Christ. Again, Baba, I ask, is there any such gospel? Uh, and should we keep saying to people, repent, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand before or before we, we say you go to hell. Thank you, sir. I hope this reaches you. I'm, I love you, Global Baba, and God bless you. Well, the gospel of repentance is not Bible because there's no gospel of repentance. There's gospel of Christ. We preach Christ. Christ is our gospel. His death, burial, and resurrection. That is our gospel. So what is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind about God. How do you change your mind about somebody you have not experienced? about somebody you have not known. So repentance only comes after the gospel of Christ is preached. You receive the gospel and begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ. Then you start changing your mind about God. So the gospel is not the gospel of repentance. It's the gospel of Christ. Lord, we're just in time for our first caller on this edition of the program. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. You know where you're calling from. Okay. Bye. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Darina. Good evening, Michael Bush. Welcome to the program. Good evening. Okay, my, my name is Johnny Randy. I'm calling from Calabar. 
Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, Go loud ahead. and clear. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Global Baba, I want to say this on a live program because I know that some of these hypocrites will be watching, even though they're sneaking to watch. Now, the issue of Abraham paying tithe, which they talk about so much, when we study the Bible, we find out that Abraham did not pay tithe from his income. What he used to give for tithe was the recovery from what was looted, which he was supposed to give back to the people that it was looted from. But he used it to pay tithe. And then, when they claim that Abraham paid tithe and it was before the law, Abraham also sacrificed animals before the law. So why don't they bring it into the New Testament? And then blindly, they do not see that the, the scriptures they quote, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, says when you give your tithe, God will open the windows of heaven and then they pay. And at the end of the day, they still borrow money to speak. has blinded people so much that they can't take simple truth and live with it. Thank you for all you're doing, Papa. We continue to follow your teaching. Amen. That's a good one. That's a good one. And moreover, there are three types of tight in the Old Testament. So when somebody says pay tight, ask him which of them. Because there are three types of tight in the Old Testament. And Abraham only gave tight once. There's no other record he gave tight. He gave only once. You know, and it was from the spoil of war, like you said. Anyway, from Monday, 12 noon, GMT plus one. Full throttle on tight. Global Baba. Then the Continental. Global Baba. So yes. why, why you, you spoke well, Global Baba, and then said anywhere from Monday, and everybody connected with it. Why? They, they know what we're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> okay, Global Baba, talking about that, um, a minister of God, I don't know whether it's in Lagos, has, um, has hit out at uh, Petal Dollar. I don't know. Did you see it? Somebody. Somebody uh, told me. Okay, you have not seen Somebody it. Somebody in Ka Yusuf? Yes. He used to be my good friend. Okay. He no longer I used is. to preach for him. He used to preach for me. Okay. We've come a long way from Zaria. I know him very well. So because he's your friend, Global Bar, no comment? I, no, you know, the reason why he's bashing at Creflo Dollar is because he is still struggling with the law of Moses on restitution. That's his major problem. And until he agrees that there's a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, he will keep having that problem. Global Baba. The Intercontinental. I don't know. You know, once you speak on something, I like the authoritativeness you bring to bear on the matter. You just say it and close the chapter, end of discussion, we all go home. Yes, because once he understands the difference between the Old and the New Testament, he won't, do all of, he won't say those things anymore. Because in the New Testament, there's no restitution, just like we're saying tonight. It's hypocrisy for people to be asking, for people to do restitution, where they, when they themselves have not done restitution on certain areas of their lives. It's hypocrisy. Hey, Global, but what's even criminal, what's even bad, what's even unchristianly about somebody who says, oh, I used to do this thing, I no longer want to do it. Why do people move against people who do that and say, oh, I want to do a new thing, I think this is the better way. Why do we complain? You know, it's Chris Okotie, my friend, he said when he got born again, Chris Okoti, you know he was a star. Absolutely. He was a music star. A, B, C. So he said, like so. uh, ABC. Mm. he said when he got born again, Christians in UNN, his university, were fasting that God should not forgive him. <laughs> that he has committed too much sins to now be born again. Mm. So sometimes the problem is legalism. You know, the mindset, religion has done a lot of damage to a lot of people's mindset. And it will take time to correct and fix things and, you know, bring people. Global Bar, let's make progress now as we come to Uyo Akwaibum State. I write from Akwaibum State, Uyo precisely. Dear Global Baba, our Apostle Paul of our time, I felt in love with the scripture interpretation survey early this month while I was listening to your program 
for the first time. And I was like, wow, never seen this kind before. Even my instincts, that very moment, welcome to you joyously. Dear Dr. Damina, I must say that God is truly with you, and I pray for God's sustainability. Grace to you to continue, grace for you to continually put your shoulder to the will of this gospel and push along till the will of God is fully manifest. Amen and amen and amen. Okay, anonymous entry looks like something for counseling. It's a long one, and my producer has said that we should deal with this one immediately. Global Barber, I'm a boy of 22 years, a youth that loves God and actually the gospel too. I'm born again, Global Barber. I got baptized 2018 when I was 18 years old, and I started striving for perfection, but life turned out to be what I couldn't imagine. I've been encountering predicaments and disappointments left, right, and center. I have been prophesied to concerning my predicaments by several people. Some are people I don't know, but since I hardly take things of such nature serious, I always wave them off and say in my heart, God will make me a great person. And I've been having this greatness imagination of how I want my life transformed in due time as being my faith. But seriously, these temptations, as I likely labeled them, I've got to a point that even the least things don't work for me again, Global Baba. To be candid, I'm so disappointed in life, and I've got to a peak of giving up, but then I still have some leftover faith that God's perspective is not of man's, that my time will come seemingly soon. Even as I'm writing this piece, Global Baba, I'm so depressed, totally, and I pray this gets to you because my faith tells me you are my last bus stop because I believe through the words from your mouth, God will intervene in my situation faster than I ever thought. For the past two weeks, Global Baba, now, if not mistaken, listening to your programs on radio has been my only source of hope and motivation while I learn as well from you daily on your daily program. Dear Global Baba, my request is only words from your mouth. Just your sincere prayer to help me break this yoke and covenant on my head. I heard them say it's a family thing, but I rebuke what doesn't know me not to know me in any dimension. Global Baba, pray for divine mercy and God's grace upon my life, and I know I'm getting it. My story might sound as a tell, but it's even not the start of it, just a prologue, this story that I'm telling you. My story content uh, is the part I almost denounced God. Okay, my story contains a part that I almost denounced God. I am currently going through hard life, real hard life, Global Baba, to an extent one might think I'm too young for such. I know it's over. Your prophecy alone is breaking this covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll need direct contact with you so we can counsel with you. So once this service is over, Dr. Gabriel should grab hold of that uh, email and reach out to him and uh, see how we can counsel and help him through this situation. Praise God. Amen. To United Kingdom next and uh, our first uh, tranche of calls. The first window closes now. So let's take another five minutes, come back to you, the producer, for calls. Our most beloved Global Baba, this email is being sent so that heaven can join us in praising you for the work that you do for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Global Baba, for allowing God to use you to give meaning to our Christianity. Because of your teachings, the Bible has become the book that is both the most fascinating and exciting to read. One can get the impression from listening to the revelational teachings that you are not from this planet or teaching, or that you teach from a different Bible than the one we have. Please accept my congratulations on the occasion of your and our Global Mama's 30th marriage anniversary. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you continue to take pleasure in your marriage and the children it bears. Global Baba, I want to bring to your attention the fact that your prophetic declarations, which states that in our generation, charlatans in the pulpit will be terrified to climb it, are now coming to pass, and it's always during the period of the 30 days of glory that this occurs. My belief is that it is being used by our God to validate the 30 Days of Glory program. I was reminded of an important American pastor who made public statements disowning and dissociating himself from the messages of his prosperity gospel ministry within the past two years during 30 Days of Glory. This time round, just prior to the beginning of the 30 Days of Glory, a different pastor said the same thing regarding Titan. Our faith in God that within the next 30 Days of Glory, famous pastors from Nigeria will step forward to share their testimony in the same way, in Jesus' name. Amen. Global Baba, I'm one of your sons in Ikma, that should be, diaspora, and I want you to know that we are supporting you in every way possible, spiritually and financially. Since we made the decision to have you act as our spiritual father and mentor, you've done the job that we do in ministry much easier and more interesting. 
will continue to get, get together and pray for you, that God will continue to open doors of opportunity for you, and that he will deliver you from wicked and evil men, if not all men, for not all men <clears throat> have faith. Amen. Thank you, Adlobu Baba. Thank you, His Excellency Dr. Michael Bush. Wow, I love that one. Um, golden man. That sounds like a... Golden man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Global Baba. Thank you, Adlobu Mama. Thank you, Pastor Praise, all the leaders of Power City, you and members of this great ministry. We love you all. I'm your son, Pastor Augustine Ochebri, Word of Grace Ministry, Newcastle, United Kingdom. Great thank, one. Thank you, Pastor Austin. Thank you. Global Baba. Yep. You have children all over the world. Well, that's what the gospel does. Yes. To South Africa next, and this one, Eliza Mampisi Maseko writes from South Africa. Says, man of God, I'm scared for my life. Some witch doctor, Global Baba, threatened me after he asked me to invest 40000 in his company and failed to put that 40000 in his construction company. Now he said that he would teach me a lesson and I would suffer. Please pray for my children and me, Global Baba. We'll pray for you, but don't be afraid. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Don't be afraid. Don't let it terrify you. You know, uh, recognize your authority in Christ. Stand in the place of authority and declare, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Bless you. Amen. Okay, Global Baba, another one from Ayak. Doesn't tell us where the right from, so we just take this one. Hello, Global Baba. Thank you for your wonderful work. In the body of Christ. Please, Global Baba, I'm in a very critical situation abroad where I have to attend court. Please kindly pray that God should arrange circumstances to work for in my favor. I believe there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Ayak. Ayak will pray for you at the end of the broadcast. Hello, Global Baba and the articulate Mr. Michael Bush. I've been an online follower of the truth from this temple of revelation. I bless the day I came in contact with this great ministry. My entire understanding of God's word has changed. I now preach the little I've learned from Global Baba. I have ordered so many of your books, which is an hour opener. Also, the daily devotional is my daily vitamin. This question is from one of my converts I introduced to Global Baba's teachings. He wants to know if it's okay for him as a virgin to marry a girl who is not a virgin, but a truly born-again girl. I wanted a better understanding, hence I'm asking Global Baba... Thanks for all you do for mankind. Please, I encourage people to order those books. I got mine by DHL in two days. Global Baba. Wonderful. <laughs> well, oh, no. Global Baba. <laughs> when it has to do with those kind of choices, they're personal. Yes. You know, so it's your personal decision. It does not make you righteous or unrighteous. Absolutely. It does not make God happy or unhappy. It's just your personal decision. So you go ahead. Think about it. See if that's what you want. And if that's not what you want, do exactly what you want. But remember, remember, at the end of the day, you want a partner that will help you serve God and help you fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Amen. Amen. Okay, the, the window, the second window for phone calls has opened. And just in time, our producer brings on this caller. Hello. Yeah, hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Are you there? Okay, global, but, um, you know, so this guy is a Christian and yes. needs to get uh, married. And yes. I, I, I think, global, but from the teaching that you have taught all of us. Yes. Uh, the moment you get into a situation like that, you remember Jesus. You know, right. What did we do? that Jesus suddenly just forgot all of our past, all our sins and all of that. And then, because you're a human being, or because you kept yourself, you're questioning another person. I think Preach. you just think of Jesus. Preach. You know? Preach. Global Baba. Global, Preach. <laughs> Global Baba, let's move on now to Botswana. My name is Pastor Mansane. I write from PCI Orapa in Botswana. I know this question has been asked in different ways, but I would like to ask it again this way, Global Baba. Also... I know our duty is not to go around measuring on sins. Can you be gay and Christian and born again at the same time, meaning a practicing proud homosexual? We recently came from what the world called gay pride, etc., where they celebrate their gay identity, etc. When one gets engaged in such proudly celebrate such to an extent that they proudly engage in such intimacy to an extent they are planning to get married, 
Here, are, here we are not talking about where someone knows it's wrong and they are working on it to change, but they are embracing it as their identity for prolonged, a prolonged period of time. Can you be gay, Global Baba, and born again at the same time? Well, just like it is with all other sins, people get born again and still indulge in other sins. Uh, it's not gay that defines you. It is the nature in you that defines you. So somebody can be born of God, but because he's suffering from identity crisis, can get involved with gay. But what you do to such people is you draw them close and expose them to the message of Christ. As they begin to focus on Christ and what he has done, their identity suddenly comes alive on their inside, and all those practices become disgusting to them. That's what you do for such people. Global Bible moving to Ghana and some serious matter of international uh, importance hits us next. Andy, writing from Ghana, Global Baba, please, has some serious issue at hand that I want to advise. The issue is the man of God who is training me, I'm his associate pastor, this man of God, General Vasia Global Baba, has sexual intercourse. I mean, he has sex with my wife. Not once, not twice, Global Baba. I wanted to deal with him legally. Global Baba is a Christian. What should I do? I don't know what to do, and I love my wife. Please, I need massive counseling on how to go about it, Global Baba. And what is the biblical advice on this? How do I go about it, Global Baba? You know. Well, the way the, the person is asking I, it, Global I, I, Baba. I can feel it from yeah, the sure. way you're reading The way he's asking it, he's saying, I'm sure if he were an acquired mind, would have said before I kill somebody. Yes, Answer this question. Yes, 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 yes. There's <laughs> a lot of emotion in his voice. Yes, Global Baba, let's just take this call okay. and we'll come back in no time. Hello. Yeah, many thanks for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Yes, my name is Paul. Go ahead. Yes, I've been calling you to today. I think we're having some uh, technical issues. We'd yeah. like to apologize. Yeah. We'll go back to that. Well, the first thing you do is that you need to get your wife out of that church. You need to get out of that church. Then when you get out of that church, you need to report. You need to first of all confront the pastor. Ask him why he did that and what the matter is. And if he does not give you a satisfactory answer, you may need to speak to his spiritual father. But you, you have to leave that church. You and your wife have to leave that church and stay away from that environment. That's what to do. Forgive okay. him. Let yeah. him go. Because if you don't forgive him, you are the one that is going to be suffering. You are the one that will be hurt. You are the one that will be wounded. You are the one that, you know, will be deprived of many things. So forgive him. Let him go. But take your wife out of that place. Take yourself out of that place and look for a sound place where Christ is revealed and settle in and serve God. A little under 15 minutes to say our bye-byes on this edition of Ask the Counselor, a Power City International Global Program on radio, on TV, and online. This one next, Cameroon. Greetings to you, Global Baba. I'm Aki N. Samuel. I write from Douala, Cameroon. Douala, Global Baba is... What Lagos is to Nigeria, Douala is that to Cameroon. Okay. It's the economic capital of Cameroon, and uh, it's in littoral province. I just want to say a big thank you to you for all you do and all you represent in the body of Christ, Global Baba. You are indeed an endangered species that we must protect and pray for always. Your type is really far-fetched. Your ministry has made it easy for religion and tradition to be disgraced. I've been following you since 2016, and whenever I stand to minister, people are like, where are you coming from? Most people actually think I've gone to a theological seminary, of which I haven't, even though I'm planning to enroll in one in the process of time. Just staying with your messages, Daddy, has made me a Christocentric preacher that's not ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Everyone across the globe now listens to Dr. Abel Damina. Even some of the geos we have today are learning Christ from you in secret. Lo Baba, with all honesty and without mincing words, you are a great die, or is it Didas Kalos? Didas Kalos. Didas Kalos. Global Baba. You know, you know, Lo Baba, I was just think, I'm thinking about all the Greek you speak, and I said, now I'm also going to speak Ibibio sometimes to you and say that it's Greek. So we'll see how we're going to manage things. I cannot speak the Greek. But Global Baba, this one, and of the increase of God's grace and influence upon your life, ministry, and family, there is no end. I love you, Daddy. Aki N. Samuel from Douala, Cameroon. 
Thank you from Duala. But you know, when you speak Ibibio, yes. I will know it's Ibibio. Okay, no, Baba, I know. I know and the I'll... audience, their response to your Ibibio yes. will, will give you out. <laughs> okay, so I can't make Ibibio Greek. No, no, no. Okay, this caller. Hello. Are you there? Good afternoon. We have many. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Yes, this is Dr. Christian calling from Canada. Ah, Dr. Christian, how are you? Christian from Maryland. Yes. I'm doing awesome. Uh, great, great, good work. Baba is doing. I just commend um, uh, Global Baba for his consistency. I'm telling you. Um, Global Baba is in favor um, in doctrine and word. I just want to comment about Baba. Thank you so much, Baba, for speaking out to consistent, consistent. We are here, we are listening, we are learning, we are growing, and we are blasting the place. That's, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Christian. Thank you so much, Baba, for all you do. Thank you for calling, Dr. Christian. Bless you, and we're glad to hear from you today. Okay, Global Baba, I don't know. Did you answer the last entry? I think you did. Let's go to Calabar, Cross River State, just next door, Cameroon. Oh, my God. Thanks so much, Global Baba, and the amazing Mr. Michael Bush. Daddy, you are a very precious gift to this generation and beyond. I was so sick the other day and did not have money to go to the hospital. Since it has been my custom of listening and learning from a divine teachings from the radio, Daily since February 2022, I could not sit because I was so sick. I decided to lay on my bed listening. Should be laying in my bed listening while the teaching was going on. You stopped suddenly and asked about the name Jesus was given after resurrection. And when you mentioned it, I got up, kept meditating on that authority from Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Honestly, I got completely healed and free of all pains. Thanks, thanks, thanks for all the unveiling. God bless you, my, my, my global barber. My family and I love you. That year in Calabar, Cross River State. Wow, things are a, happening, Global Things Baba. are happening all over the world, and we're excited, and thank God for it. Okay, Global Baba, we have just a little over 10 minutes. Uh, we'll still take some calls as they come in, but this one, Anonymous. Hello, Global Baba and Uncle Bush. Global Baba, I, I always thank God for you. Always I'm uh, free through your teachings. Thankful. My problem, though, is that my workplace, where when we sometimes argue with my colleagues, I really find it so hard to have a normal conversation with them, and I find myself avoiding them, which is not ideal. Even the, there are days when I'm not in the mood of talking even to my bosses, and they do take it serious. The thing is, I don't hate um, them. I don't have hate in me, and they have problems. Uh, when, when they have problems, I'm always ready to help. After work, I feel really bad about my behavior and start uh, confessing that tomorrow I would not behave like that. But when tomorrow comes, the same thing, sometimes even worse. I feel so bad sometimes. What can I do to stop uh, taking things in my heart, Global Baba? Well, stay with the message. Focus on Christ. Look at Christ. Look at what Christ will do if he was in your shoes. And just begin to look into the mirror until, until the reality in the mirror is more real than your behavior. When you do that, you'll find out that the appetite to act like that suddenly disappears. So focus on Christ. And don't try not to do it. Just focus on Christ. After a while, you'll find out that that transformation has taken place. Remember what I was teaching tonight? Walking in the Spirit begins with the way you think. So once there's a transformation in your thinking, it will affect your conduct. Glory, glory, glory. Hello, Dr. Abel Damina, Global Barban, the greatest anchor, Mr. Michael Bush. I always get excited during a period like this because it always is the time to learn more and more. Knowing you, Global Barban, has built me up in terms of how I study and interpret the texts of scriptures. Please help me with this one. I realize Paul used the expression with fear and trembling. It is recorded in 1 Corinthians 2. 3 and 2 Corinthians 7 15, Ephesians 6 5, and Philippians 2 12. Bismarck, aren't we in Ghana? Bismarck is not fear like fear, it's reverence. Reverence and caution. That's what Paul was talking about. Global Baba, let's now go and another anonymous entry. Dear Global Baba, uh, understandably, I understand this is anonymous, so I'll find out that in a moment. I need insight into this portion of scripture. What does it mean to deliver such? A one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. First Corinthians 5, 5, uh, uh, King James Version. 
to deliver such and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you must cast this man out of the church and into Satan's hands so that his sinful nature will be destroyed and he himself be saved when the Lord returns. Well, again, hand over the person to Satan. It's not Satan. It's accusation. Leave him in the hand of accusation. Let people accuse him and let that bring shame to him and let that shame help him to be humble enough to make adjustments. That's what Paul was talking about. Greetings to you, great Global Baba. My name is Emmanuel Essien. I reside here in Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. I want to specifically thank you for your daily words of truth uh, that you teach us every day and by the Spirit of God, making the whole scriptures to have a clear and precise interpretation. Without understanding, I have been searching for teachers of the word about Jesus all my life because I knew very well that almost all the churches around me and their goal of physical prosperity, which adds nothing to one's faith. They spend hours and time praying for prosperity, which God had already promised to give to those who believe. I've been listening to your messages online, and I have this intense measure to switch my fellowship gathering to yours. I probably stay with my parents who do not sometimes believe in your words, but just to keep the house in peace, I still go to the church they go. I'm quickened and sure about the things you say. They are definite truth in which... Other so-called men of God can't even hear. I love you, Global Baba. May God keep you safe from these bragging evil preachers. I will take the words to the ends of the earth. Thank you so much, Power City. Oh, thank you for reaching out. We appreciate you. Keep following. Global Baba, um, I hope I remember to come back. I just take this caller and then come back. This should be the last caller on this edition of the program. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Global Baba. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Intercontinental. Many thanks for joining us. Okay, sir, I have just a quick question. Your name? My name is Sam. I have a quick question. Okay, so when you read through the book of Judges, all through to this uh, first book of Samuel, you notice that the Spirit of God always came upon the judges. But when it came to Saul, an anointing oil was poured on him. Is there any special why anointing oil wasn't poured on all the judges? Just, you know, according to the recording of the Bible, the Spirit of the Lord came up. I just want to clarify that. Well, when you read the Spirit of God came upon, it has to do with service. It has to do with them fulfilling their prophetic function. That's the meaning of the Spirit of God came upon. Okay, Global Baba, we need to go. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can just dash to Florida in the United States of America and take this entry and then um, still go back to the young person who is having problems with, their, uh, with his parents about his church. What can people like that, you know, I, I, I received so many entries, people talking about that, you know, we even promised yeah, the other yeah. day we're going to design a program and just answer questions on that. Yeah. Well, your parents, you don't want trouble in the house, so keep following them. But of course, you know you can catch us online even when you are in their church. You can put your air, AirPods, just hook it up and be in Power City while you are in their church, enjoying the word of God and just growing. Thank God that church is not a location. You know, Global Baba, that, that answer is so, and that's the thing about you, Global Baba. Your answers are so real. They are so true. You know, I have a guy, his name is Godwin. Let me just keep his, uh, his son, son name. And that's what he does. He yeah. goes there. He does everything they want, but he has earpiece. Yep. You know, and earpiece to his ears. And, and he's following. I heard that there was a guy who is a pastor in a local church, a, a pastor under a senior pastor. Yes. And he goes to church. Yes. yes. He will put his airports and be listening to me teach. Mm -hmm. And mistakenly, he got carried away to my teaching. <laughs> and his senior pastor was preaching and walked towards him. And he didn't even pay attention because he was carried away. Mm -hmm. And his senior pastor observed that it is me he was watching. The senior pastor landed him a slap and told him it will never be well with you. <laughs> oh no, Global Baba. Okay, let's go. Let's go quickly. He oh, was no. caught in the very act. Global Baba. <laughs> Global Baba wanted to go to Florida, but my producer says no. We just must round off at this point of the program. Tomorrow is a fantastic day, but it's going to be an even more beautiful day. There's sex of 30 days of glory, 20. 22. Global Baba, 
Too many prayer requests. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for people who are sick, people who are going through challenges and Amen. turbulence. Amen. We ask for a miracle of intervention. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We arrange circumstances and situations that will get people out of challenges, out of problems. We ask for your favor and we decree sick bodies be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's this edition of Ask the Counselor and indeed of 30 Days of Glory 2022, Day 5. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Query, fantastic guy anytime, any day, and of course the production team. The most fantastic of all of us, of course, is next, and his voice takes us home. Help me welcome in a special way, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Thank you again for what you do and how you serve us. Can we celebrate Mr. Bush again for serving us? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, we want to thank all of you who gave us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God, bring you teaching, bring you clarity, and it's just exciting. Don't forget, from Monday 12 noon, from coming Monday 12 noon, every 12 noon will be tight and tightened. We're going to go into sound exegesis. From Genesis to Revelation, and we're going to deal with the cultural implication of 10% before Abraham paid 10%. So it's going to be very exhaustive. You don't want to miss that series. If you know people who have been worried about it or confused about it, encourage them to hook up. It will be on Facebook, our page, at Abel Damina, and it will be on YouTube. And don't forget, tomorrow we're here again. It's going to be exciting. 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Enjoy the grace of Christ and until we see you tomorrow, be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen.